exercise of the whole book was actually taking something that was destroyed, which was this body, and reconstruct it all again uh, through language. How the hammer is used by the protagonist is to pretend that she's safe, that she has some agency over and a violence, that she doesn't know if it's going to happen again because it already happened, so it cannot rebuild from the past, but maybe gives her some sort of direction. Quando Thor bate seu martelo, é sinal de chuva e trovão, mas é a flor do mandacaru que anuncia chuva no sertão. Para o tubarão martelo, o martelo funciona como uma asa, estabilizando seus movimentos e, além disso, o ritual de acasalamento dos tubarões martelo é muito violento. Na bandeira da Albânia comunista, substituíram o martelo por um fuzil. O martelo é um objeto ótimo, que serve para dormir bem ou pregar pregos. When Thor strikes his hammer, it signals rain and thunder, but it's the flower of the mandakura that announces rain in Sarataro for the hammerhead shark. The hammer works as a wing, stabilizing his movements, and also the mating ritual of hammerhead sharks is incredibly violent. In communist Albania, they replaced the hammer with a rifle. The hammer is an optimal object for good sleeping or hitting nails on the head. Reading that poem, Flora, and being like, yeah, this is, this is a poet because of what you're writing about, because of that poem that I could be able to translate. And then being really um, pleasantly surprised by then all the poems and how they were all in the lineage of Flora. Laura tem um corpo e um nome que lhe pertencem. Laura de Vermont, presente, foi assassinada por homens, pelo Estado, pela nossa indiferença, aos 18 anos, num sábado. Laura has a body and a name that belong to her. Laura de Vermont, present, was murdered by men, by the state, and by our indifference, aged 18, on a Saturday. Adelaide's work comes from a certain context. You write of a specific context. As a reader, there's a work of empathy that comes through it. As a translator, of course, there's a concern to not let the male voice prevail. I think of translators as facilitators. We're vessels, kind of. The important thing is for Adelaide's work to prevail rather than anything else. I also translate, so when I see other translators translating what I write in Portuguese, it definitely informs how I translate. Mm. I think it's really important to understand that the translator is also creating. So you, once you said yes, you work together, but you also have to let go because it's somebody else's work. In the end, it's like really trusting and usually what happens is that you just get gifts. <laughs> <laughs>